Hey, it's Jim with Digital Anarchy. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about camera and light sync problems. And specifically what they do is they cause rolling bands like what you're seeing in this scene and around me. And it's a pretty common problem, especially now that LED lights are so common. And especially when you dim them, which is how we're creating the effect here. But they can happen with any type of lighting. They can, there's many different reasons cameras and lights can get out of sync. But Flickr Free does a great job of fixing it, as you can see. And we're going to talk about how to do that, how you can do it, and what's involved. So let's dive into it. So we're going to talk about not only fixing it, but the problems that you're going to run into, and some of the ways to make changes to the settings and the different settings that will give you different results. And you know, if you can't totally get rid of the rolling bands, what trade-offs you can make, and what settings you can use to evaluate those trade-offs and see which one is actually going to work best. So what I've got here is someone pouring a cup of coffee and I'm going to apply Flickr Free. And what I'm going to do is select the Rolling Bands 4 preset. That is usually the best place to start with the Rolling Bands problem. And you can see that it does a really nice job of getting rid of it. And often this is all you need to do is apply Rolling Bands 4 and boom, it's solved. But let's take a little bit closer look at this and see exactly what's going on. While it looks great, there are some problems that something to watch out for in your other clips. So you can see that the hand here is moving in very quickly. You can see that his hand is coming in over a few frames. But one thing that you notice is that if I turn Flickr Free on, his hand gets pretty smudged. It becomes pretty blurry. And also, the flicker isn't completely gone. It looks a lot better, and for most people, it's gonna be great. You know, if you're not looking for the flicker, it's really hard to see. But if you know it's there, you can kind of focus on the area over here, and you'll see that there is still a little bit of flicker. So what to do about these situations? Now, in this case, the hand is only on for a few frames. No one is really going to notice that it's a little bit smudged and we can get away with it. And the same goes for the residual flicker that's over in this area. But these are common problems with lots of footage where you can't get away with it. You know, if you have a wedding and you have the bride quickly turn her head and it's, there's some smearing going on, it's not going to work. So let's dive into my one and two pass comp here. And I'll point out that we are in After Effects, but all these tips and tricks work in pretty much every host application that Flickr Free works in. Whether you're in Premiere or Final Cut or Resolve or Avid or whatever, all of this stuff uh, equally applies. So let's talk about the different options. So let's go back to our one pass. And this is what's happening in the center here, which you can see if I turn Flickr Free on and off. So kind of the key parameters here are sensitivity, time radius, and detect motion. You want to have detect motion on if at all possible. And let me explain why. Because when you have fast motion like this, detect motion is what's compensating for it. If I turn detect motion off in this case, it does not look better. We get a lot of ghosting, we get a lot of smearing, and this is basically unusable. So if I turn detect motion on, it's going to analyze the footage, detect when there's abrupt motion, and compensate for it. It's a really important part of the plugin. So if you can leave this on, do so. But sometimes you can't. And we're going to talk about what to do in that case. But first off, I just want to talk about sensitivity and time radius. So if you increase sensitivity and decrease time radius, you will get less flicker reduction. You will also get less smearing. So if I increase sensitivity up to 15, you'll see that a lot of the detail in the hand comes back. But you also get less flicker reduction. And when we take a look at the cutting board where the flicker is happening, you can see what the difference is. Now, of course, all these project files are online. You can check them out, download them. You can download this footage and play around with it all yourself to see exactly what's going on. But this is how we make trade-offs. If we are not happy with the smearing that's happening, say if we have that bride with her you know, quick turn of her head, you have to fill around with you know, sensitivity, increasing sensitivity, 
decreasing time radius and seeing if you can get the smearing to go away while still removing most of the flicker. And usually when I'm doing this and making these adjustments, I only have like a second or two of the video footage selected so that I can render out quickly and see what effect my changes are having. So increasing sensitivity has that effect. So we can set this back down to five. You'll see the smearing come back. We can also reduce time radius to say like four, and that will also help with the smearing. And so either decreasing time radius or increasing sensitivity, either one or the other or both, will help you fiddle and finesse how much flicker reduction you have and how much smearing or ghosting comes up in the video. And this is really mostly a problem if the subject is fast moving. It's only when the hand is just jumping in from the side that you really start to have an issue. So that's how sensitivity and time radius work. So you can also do two passes. And so that's what this comp is over here. And you can see in the first pass, I have detect motion turned off with a time radius set to three, which is about as low as that's gonna go. And sensitivity is set to 15. And with detect motion turned off and this fast motion, you really can't go any higher than three or four. There's just gonna to be too much ghosting, too much smearing. Although of course you can play with the sensitivity and so the higher you have this, the higher you'd have to have sensitivity to maybe offset the ghosting. But again, you can kind of play with these two and kind of see the interaction between the two and get a look that is acceptable to you. But in this case, we've got, so these are very low settings. There's not a ton of flicker reduction happening, but with detect motion off and then the second pass with detect motion on, you essentially have two different algorithms combating the flicker. So this can be a good way of dealing with problematic footage where you have flicker, but you also have fast movement. And so doing the first pass with detect motion off, but with very low settings, we'll get rid of a certain amount of the flicker, and then we can apply a second pass that has the tech motion turned on, and that allows us to crank the time radius up much higher. And so what's happening with time radius is it means Flicker Free is looking at a wider range of frames. So in the case of eight, I'm looking at the current frame and then eight frames forward and eight frames back for a total of 17 frames. So less processing going on here. It's looking at less frames, which means there's gonna be less ghosting. Whereas down here with the second pass, I'm looking at a lot more frames, but with detect motion turned on, it's doing a little bit better job of compensating for any motion that's happening over those 17 frames. And so you can see that I've got a lot more detail on the hand here, but if I play this back, you can see flicker reduction with one pass looks a little bit better. And so in this case, with this footage, I would go with the one pass approach because the smearing on the hand isn't really that noticeable. It's not that big of a deal. It's only on for a few frames and it's moving quickly. It's unlikely that any viewer is going to really notice it. Now, if I had, again, that bride moving her head quickly, I really need to have the detail back. And in that case, the two pass approach might be better. I might be willing to sacrifice a little bit of flicker reduction in order to keep the detail on the bride's face. But you know, what's acceptable and what's going to work is gonna vary depending on the footage and exactly what's more of a problem. And so these are the ways to deal with these problems. Again, either applying two passes or one pass. And regardless of whether you do one pass or two pass, playing with sensitivity, increasing it, results in less flicker reduction and less smearing. Whereas with time radius, if you decrease it, you get less flicker reduction and less smearing. And if you increase it, you get more flicker reduction and more smearing. So they work in opposite directions, but they definitely work in tandem. And then of course you need to be aware of detect motion and whether you can have that turned on or off. Uh, as mentioned, it's best to have it turned on if you can. So those are some tips and tricks for dealing with the rolling band problem and the settings that will give you different looks and different ways of making trade-offs between the smearing issue and flicker reduction. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Swing on by digitalanarchy.com for all our demo filters, uh, more tutorials, all sorts of good stuff. We have free filters up there. Lots of great stuff at digitalanarchy.com. 
And thank you for joining me and hopefully see you in the next tutorial.